Welcome to New Mexico Black Rifle Operators Union. I'm your host, Sean. Sorry I took a little bit of time off. Um, not really intended. I uh, had lots of stuff to get ready for the new uh, year, fiscal year, if you know what I mean, uh, for work. So with all the stuff I was doing there, uh, I couldn't spare the brain power to do this, <laughs> even though it doesn't seem like it's a lot. So, from TimCast.com, breaking U.S. House passes first assault weapons ban since 1994. So, this hits home because this is stuff that we all love. Stuff that these guys in red shirts that you can see here at Moms Demand Action, they're at every protest that you could possibly ever be at. Um, that's pro 2A. They're also at every hearing you will ever be at or um, speaking to any public office or politician. These folks will be there. They're seat fillers. Um, they're kind of hired to go from point to point. Um, some of them are hired. Some of them are volunteers. Here's what sucks about it. They make a big big display in front of whatever politician that they're about to appear before. Uh, in New Mexico specifically, they got to speak before the pro 2A guys and they packed what little of the lobby that they could versus us. So they made a, an appearance because they were all wearing the same thing. They all had the same stuff, so it was obvious they were with one group. They got preference and they got to speak longer than we did. Um, each person that got to go before the house in New Mexico got about a minute and a half, I think, or a minute um, to speak about the gun stuff laws that they were trying to pass then. This is past the house. The next step is something like this has got to pass the Senate. This is where we got to be active. Call our senators, make them pay. Call, uh, call them all the time. And I'm talking about your state senators and your house, uh, your state reps and senators at the federal level and at the state level. Because if you put pressure on them, they'll put pressure on the guys that need it. Okay. Now. The other reason why this hits home is one of the provisions of this act actually prohibits like a Glock 19, one of the most popular handguns in the United States. And why this is specifically hit me today and why I'm making this podcast to talk about this to uh, specifically today is there were three shootings this weekend in my rural Northwest New Mexico town. Two of which of those shootings ended with people dying. The other one's in the hospital right now getting uh, treated. Now, why do I bring uh, this up and handguns specifically, why they were talking about banning things like handguns? It's becoming increasingly clear that no matter where you live in the United States, that law enforcement isn't necessarily going to help you or can they help you. With that, if they ban things like the Glock 19 or the Glock 17 or any other gun, it's not going to help violence. It's not. We've got a cultural problem that we're not talking about. People like Bill Mayer are kind of hitting around it that we we really need to start talking about culture itself because this is the problem but i digress people that are average citizens that are concealed carry holders are now being affected by gun laws that they're trying to pass and that's always been the case but never has it been this glaringly obvious so what will happen if they ban this in the current language that they speak of right now is it pretty much 
bans anything semi-automatic, which means modern in any way, that can swap magazines. That means your pistols, your self-defense guns, are probably going to be banned. Now, normally, I would say that with the, the hurdles that are in the House and the Senate, that there would be enough to stop this from passing. Um, I can honestly say after the red flag laws passing at the federal level, I don't have any confidence at the House or in the Senate that either side will oppose anything like this. They're not significantly afraid of losing their seats um, in of power in the House or the Senate for them to go ahead and try to pass this. This is a very unpopular thing in the United States. The only reason why the people that have crossed the line, to my knowledge, um, this is why you have to start paying attention in your local and federal elections because if you just vote according to party, you're liable to vote for someone that won't stand up for you when you need it. These are our rights. But now that crime is getting to be a problem again, it's becoming increasingly apparent that we have to take care of ourselves. And we have to be able to defend ourselves, our friends, our family, and those around us. There are going to be people that hate you for being a concealed carry guy. That's fine. They don't need to know you're a concealed carry guy. The first part of that whole statement is conceal, right? So you're not actively telling people that you're carrying a gun. That's so that you can blend in and only use it when you need to. You carrying a gun isn't a symptom of, it shouldn't be a symptom of, let's put it that way, of your manliness, your femininity, anything like that. It should be just like a tool. It should be just like you carrying a pocket knife or your keys or your cell phone. It's a tool. You do. You hope you never have to use it, but if you need to, you got it. And for this particular case, it's the worst particular case possible to need a tool. What this starts to speak to, though, is something that Iraq veteran 8888 said. Um, Eric's his name, if you guys pay attention to his channel. And he said that right now, a lot of the stuff that's being passed is because we still, uh, or is not being passed, I should say, because the people that pass laws know that there's still a group of people that actively have a way of saying no or having a say in what they say. And he wasn't talking about voting. He was talking about the other option. If they take this, uh, these steps to ban these weapons in today's day and age, where they are the most abundant and most um, in common use, according to the Heller Act, so they should be, or the Heller decision, they shouldn't even be up for this. I'm hopeful that it won't pass. But I'm also becoming increasingly hopeful from something totally weird. And that's the marijuana lobby. <laughs> and why I say that, New Mexico, where I live specifically, is one of the most conservative places on planet Earth. These guys are rural, agrarian, oil-filled guys. Um, they're salt of the earth. They work for their families. But guess what's legal in New Mexico? Marijuana. There are dispensaries popping up everywhere. And as a libertarian, this doesn't bother me. But it shows the fact that you can have a federal law passed and that if there's mass non-compliance, there's no teeth in that law. The whole purpose of the government was to be uh, the consent of the governed, right? So if we all decide, despite whatever law they pass, we're going to do our own thing, we can do that. And we can do it peacefully, and it shouldn't be a problem. It will eventually become accepted, 
just like marijuana. That's what I'm talking about. There's a little town I work in that is absolutely amazing. Everyone that lives there understands that it's rural, okay? And it has its issues. But it's family, and it's very family-oriented. You don't go into that town and you don't mess with people there. And if you work there and you're actually a good, honest, hardworking person, the, you're part of that town. Okay? When they have dispensaries popping up there in one of the most conservative corners of the world, as far as I'm concerned, it's shown that there is an American populace that still has a rebellious mindset to some degree that just will not comply. Now, the marijuana guys have been doing it for years. And being why I keep bringing up libertarians is libertarians really do mean your body, your choice. My big thing with marijuana, when I was in high school, been that guy. I've said this story many, 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 many times. Um, it was no different than alcohol. So as long as you're not behind heavy machinery and you're not engaged in firearms use, then I don't really have a problem with it. Okay? But it should, it's becoming a model that maybe we should start looking at. Maybe we should be adopting in the 2A community. And why I say that is because it is ubiquitous. It's the ultimate middle finger to the federal government because it shouldn't exist. Dispensaries around the states in the United States that have made this legal shouldn't exist. But why do they? Mass non-compliance. So much so that the states exerted their rights like they're supposed to be able to, to do whatever they need to do to regulate it or to control it better or to, to deal with the issue at hand. I do not like the fact that we have abortion up to the point of birth in New Mexico, but it speaks to the same things, that states' rights matter. And with gun rights, this is specifically a thing that really needs to be stressed. And if you're behind the blue curtain like I am, it's now that we need to exert, exert not exert, exert our force on these people to make them understand that this isn't a Democrat thing, this isn't a Republican thing, this isn't a anything thing, this is a people thing. And we the people like this right. We want to keep our right because we do not want you to enforce your rule on us without us having a say in it. I think that's enough of a rant right there. I know it's a weird place to be to actual start thinking about the marijuana lobby and the 2A hand in hand. But I know for a fact that if these pass the House and the Senate, and they, they will get signed in because Biden is that guy that's asking for this stuff. I'm not going to comply. I'm not giving up that stuff. I'm not giving him any magazines. I'm not giving him anything I bought any bought with my money. Um, I'm not getting compensated for it. It's mine. Um, we will deal with it in the courts. Um, but I do not and will not cooperate with this. This is my first act of non-compliance. Um, I will not comply with these laws. These are unjust. These will be shown that you're banning something because technology advanced. And because you have a problem that you can't fix any other way, you're going to take the easiest way that is the most restrictive and prohibitive way towards the American people. And it's time that the American people start growing a backbone and say, no, that's enough. After two years of compliance, after two years of everything you've put me through, I'm done. We're done here. So I'm not going to comply. Anyone that listens to this, I hope you're in the same boat. I hope you uh, take the actions I have already. I've already written, <sighs> sent emails, I should say. I've already called. I'll continue to call. 
doesn't really do any good on a week.